Rachel, thank you for the presentation. Mm -hmm. I think when a lot of people hear about maternal mortality, they think of uh, better information for the clinician or for nurses. What you're really talking about is a tool that can help policymakers and data collectors at the state level, right? Yeah, so the general premise of the tool is for it to be used by policymakers either at the state or federal level. And, and the reason for this is because every state in the U.S. is basically, is basically doing something different for Which maternal. Which is a big problem. It's a huge problem. Um, you know, if you're trying to do an apples to apples comparison between states, how are you going to do that if everyone's doing something different? So, for example, if, you know, every single state is speaking a different language and then they're voluntarily reporting that to the national level and, you know, there's some national translator that's trying to make sense of what's happening in Florida versus what's happening in Texas, but the words don't translate, it's very difficult to create sort of, you know, a federal approach when, when everything's so different and really understanding that specific current state of, of each state. So we need local governments, we need state governments, we need federal governments to all work together to create this standardized approach so we can really understand our populations, understand what the problems are, and design interventions to correct for those problems. And, we and this tool can help help uh, ease the path towards that kind of standardization? Well, yeah, I mean, it's you need good data in to really understand your population. So there needs to be, um, you know, improvements in the data quality space. We need data to be collected the same. We need the standard definitions. We need it to be stored the same and disseminated the same. Um, and that's why we've spent so much time sorting through these different data quality issues to get the best available data sources and socializing the tool with stakeholders in the space to say, hey, what are what are issues present within this data set? What data set should we be using? How can we use this? And 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 getting the best thing out there. And hopefully, you know, this tool will inspire others to say, hey, like look at what California is doing. They standardize their data approach. They designed a data-driven interventions and successfully reduce their maternal mortality rates in comparison to other states. So we want to empower other states to see the impact of what using California's approach could have on their state and how many lives they could save and how many families, you know, they could have an impact on. And you know, yes, it's important for doctors and hospitals to be, you know, introducing these interventions, but it's just as important for state and local governments to get involved in this because it's it's a more systemic issue. In the future, we want to add um, severe maternal morbidity into the tool. So for every one death, there's, depending on the location, 50 to 100 almost deaths. Um, and by adding all of these women into, um, into the simulation, we'll be able to understand the populations better and these same interventions can be applied to those women and we can have more impact on um, reducing rates of severe maternal morbidity as well. And you've heard from from partners or stakeholders about how how we could do that. Yeah. So um, with all the different data quality issues that are present within maternal mortality um, data, a lot of the stakeholders in the field have been recommending that severe maternal morbidity um, is a really great indicator to study and look at. And you know, there's a lot higher numbers, and so there's a lot of impact to be made as there as well. Um, so we're really looking forward to um, adding those different data sources and we're in the process of that right now and I, I think it'll make the tool a lot more um, robust um, in the future. You mentioned using synthetic data to get a better approximation of the, of, uh, the problem in a local area. What, what does that look like? What's the benefit of synthetic data? I know that MITRE has, has worked a lot in this area in recent years, but I'm interested to know how you think that will help reduce maternal mortality. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and I know even a couple years ago, I wasn't familiar with what synthetic data was, but within this space, um, it is the best option. And MITRE does have a lot of wonderful capabilities and data scientists that um, you know are really leading the field in using synthetic um, data to understand um, different healthcare issues. Um, specifically, 
synthetic data allows us due to the you know the privacy concerns with there being you know a limited number of maternal deaths in the US even though there should be none um, it allows us to look at the you know the defactors of those women so age race income employment um, county of county of residence and understand their factors without actually having to identify those women. So they're not technically real, but all of their factors are real and it it would allow policymakers to understand their populations without having to worry about the privacy privacy concerns surrounding data. Okay, and hopefully move us closer to none, right? And yes, closer to none. There should not be a single death in in the US from from pregnancy and considering, you know, all of the resources that we have and capabilities that we have um, and that we're the only industrialized nation in the world with an increasing maternal mortality rate, this really is a public health concern that needs to be addressed. Well, Rachel, thank you very much for, for sharing this work with us. Yeah, of course. Thank you.